Um, okay, split second decisions, marketing in real time. As you probably all know, the internet lets us be in an, a world of real timeness both ways, back and forth between consumers and companies and everything else. Ooh, time is of the essence. A quick, thoughtful move can allow your brand to capture a moment, but how do you make those real time decisions? Please welcome. Come on, guys. Hey. First, we got David Graham from, he's the uh, digital director for Europe, Coca Cola Company, small little brand. And then we got Amit from Abner from TK, he's the founder and CEO. And I'm going to be your moderator for this one. Um, one of the things I like about this kind of a panel is that we have, instead of having competing technologies, we have a brand mm -hmm. and a technology provider. And so we get to have you know, different views. And I think the good news, David's only been at Coke for a couple of months, so he actually is a person of wide experience. <laughs> so we can talk to lots of different things. So I just wanted to start off quickly. I mean, there's some, uh, there's probably enough people in the war room who know have heard RTB, real-time bidding. That is, I'll let Amit parse the difference between RTB and RTM, which is so what we there's a big misconception in the market that everything that's RTM is RTB and vice versa. That's actually not true. So RTB means bidding in real time, going on um, Google's platforms or AppNexus and basically buying media based on bids. And real time marketing is about the content, is about the targeting, is about the strategy, about the placement, is how to react to things that happen. It's not about the cheapest source of inventory or about programmatic. Would you agree with me on yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, the uh, the RTB is all about um, you know push uh, content, whether it's av in, in advertising and paid media. Whereas RTM is much more in the owned and owned space. And like you say, it's like uh, listening and creating content on what you're learning, and then uh, reaching out with, you know, to your audience that way. I think the best way to look at it, RTB is about efficiency. It's mm -hmm. about programmatic stuff, and and RTM is about the strategy, the content, and the targeting itself. And is there, I mean, for instance, take your company. What, how do, it's a technology company, it, it's automated, right? It, Correct. How does that, I mean, it, on the one hand, RTM, as you guys practice mm -hmm. it, is a, a, a high touch human activity, and yet you've got a technology company. How does that, I'll let you explain. Well, actually, David, why don't you, so let's just start with the human side. I mean, it, how, how does it work at Coca Cola? How do, you, how do you guys define real time marketing, and how do you do it? Well, we, you know, we have a lot of uh, technology that supports um, our real-time real marketing, but it's very, you know, it's, 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 it's um, human first, so we are, you know, we're listening to what, what people are saying, we're, we're analyzing that, we're picking up so on what the trends. So a classic example is, is what? Well, um, mo measuring what, or listening to what people are saying on Twitter or on Facebook uh, and seeing uh, what they're talking about and whether that's something that, uh, that, that we can uh, engage with and react to and, and, and you, you help jump feed into that the conversation. conversations? Yeah, where it, where it makes sense and when, and when we've got the right content to do so, then, then, then we then And we will you would do. use promoted tweets or how do you... Uh, typically it starts organic uh, and then if, if we see that there's some momentum there, then we can support that with, uh, with, with paid media. Certainly on Facebook, um, uh, you know, we tend to not do anything that's not supported by paid media because of the reach. Uh, and you have teams have of people doing this? Yeah, and we have teams of people. So we have a, um, a customer interaction center, uh, which has a team of people dedicated to us. Do you have one um, for each country where you're... Uh, we, have, we have a hub in London that supports a number of markets uh, in that region, and then we have other CIC and centers. you have native speakers of German we and have, French? Yeah, yeah, I went to visit it uh, last week, and, and uh, we have a, 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 a team of people. There's about 20 of them, and there's a, a Norwegian, there's a Finn, there's a Dane, there's a, a Belgian-Flemish speaker, Belgian-French speaker. And uh, these are basic, I'll, I'll use the word lightly, kids who get paid to play around on Facebook and Twitter. Well, they're, they're, they're graduates and they have degrees in, and so that you know they're qualified, intelligent people, uh, and they're given the tools to be able to do the job that they do. So that we have, they have these dashboards uh, above them, big screens that uh, have software that, that monitor what's coming through and uh, the type of content that's being shared, uh, and picking up on who those influencers are, so we can reach out to those people and talk to them directly. Do you do something that could be identified as a campaign? Or we, well, we, it's, it's an always-on process, but there's also supporting campaigns when we're doing you know, a big okay. above-the-line 
uh, campaigns. But for us, you know, we have, there are, there are 33 brand mentions about us every minute across English language um, social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook. Uh, yeah, and, and um, 85. 33 a, s a second. 30, 30, 33 a minute. So two, once um, every two seconds. And, and then we have 85% of the content about our brand is created by our fans and not about us. So we, we have to be in there. We have to be listening. We have to be, you know, um, seeing what people are talking about and how they feel about us and looking at those trends and seeing if those are opportunities to have a meaningful, meaningful conversation with, with, with our customers. Okay, but so then let me jump to Amit. So now, how, do you, how does what you do fit into what he's doing? So we think that what they're doing is the future. Basically, trying to find out what your audience is talking about and what your audience cares about right now is the future. What they do, we call it the war room. It's manual. The problem with stuff like that, it doesn't scale. And Coca-Cola, for example, sells 1.9 or 2 billion mm -hmm. beverages every day in 200 countries. How many war rooms can you have? How many people can track everything that happens? So you start with tracking the mentions of your own brand. How about, mention, uh, how about tracking what your audience is talking about? How about mentioning like, people who don't mention your brand, but you want to know what they're talking about so you could market to them based on those things. So what we do in my company we build software for big brands to help them associate themselves with what's trending for their audience. So we don't track mentions. We look at what 18 to 24 year olds like music are talking about. Let's say it's Justin Bieber right now. Then we help Coke put their ads next to Justin Bieber videos and content. Two hours later, it can be iPhone. Oh, I see. So it's not necessarily Coke specific mentions. It's it's their audience, what their audience mm. talking about, because branding, in the end of the day, it's about association. I assume that Coke doesn't sponsor the Olympics because they care about sports. They want to be associated with sports because their audience cares about sports. So how is that different from what traditionally be called insight or market research? Well, from our perspective, it's, it's, it's because it's insights that's coming in you know, all the time. So normally, you know, back, back in the day, you would have done field research, you'd have done focus right. groups. Uh, to test creative and and, you know, and get those insights about consumers and what you know what you know, um, you know, what what their interests are and, and and so on. So, but now you're getting it real time. You're you're, you're getting it all the time. You're getting it 24/7. And so, uh, so that's why we've set up the the CIC to be able to to take advantage of that and and as I say, have have more meaningful conversations with people and not, and not just rely on broadcast media. So in fact, I mean, is yours, are you a dashboard for somebody? Is that, is that so how it works? It's a, we're basically a software that has multiple things. You have a dashboard that you can see, but it also automatically plugs into your media buys. It plugs into your Facebook buys. What do you Twitter mean automatically buys. plugs into your media buys? What does uh, that mean? Basically, it's a, a media engine that you can connect to your Facebook account, to your Twitter account, not to your ads account, and right. basically go and buy media based on that. So we help you actually execute the buys because one of the problems is those things change so often that you want to have as less mm -hmm. human possible as human touch as possible on some of those things. So does that mean if somebody s mentions in the t tweets that I just had a great cold Coke, they see a, a Coke ad ten minutes later, or could be, could be that's is one that of what the your things. is that what your software does? Or yes. Now I, I kind of want to touch one of the things you said about. Um, insights and research. So research is important, but this is the long-term stuff. What we care about is those little things that happen 20 times a day, 50 times a day. And now, uh, when we were backstage, we just talked about um, Alex from uh, Target, which I don't know if people know what it is, but it's a trend in the last two days. A girl took a picture of this guy who works at Walmart, and he became a a meme. All of a sudden, hundreds of thousands of followers. Walmart is, a, for those of you who don't know, Walmart and Target are major yep. competitors in the in the U.S. retail market. Correct. So, uh, so it's ads from Target, and um, and basically this guy is now on Ellen speaking about his sudden fame, and Target is using it and tweeting tweeting his picture, tweet talking about him, and it's great. But in two days, no one's going to talk about it. It's kind of like a meme that happens right now, and you can't do it with research, but right now it's really valuable for Target to be next to it because it's relevant for their audience. So, I mean, it, how much, I mean, those, how do, you, how do you find those? I mean, is it just your guys are sitting there watching the Coke Twitter stream and trying to get an insight like that, or? So we use, a, as I said, we use a number of uh, software to, to help us you know, see what's going on, and it wouldn't. Might, you know, it, it, it's tracking a, a lot of things across the web. It's tracking uh, um, any. You know, we have a, keywords that we're tracking across Facebook and uh, and Twitter and Instagram and so on. Um, so uh, and, and then from that we get those we get those uh, instant insights. But the 
you know, a product like, like, like this is really helpful because in the, at the end of the day, real-time marketing is no different to any other type of marketing. It's, it's, it's about you know, uh, being relevant to the audience, uh, having the context to the environment and providing something that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's a value, whether that's information um, or, or some sort of entertainment. And something like this helps provide, you know, provi can, I can see helps provide that context. But it does it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's at scale and it does it at speed, which is something that traditionally hasn't, you know, hasn't, how hasn't about, been How required. about damage control? I mean, every company, sometimes something mm -hmm. bad happens. Mm -hmm. Is that also part of the remit of real-time? I think so. I think real-time marketing could be applied in so many different mm -hmm. ways. So it's different use cases. You could have the use case of always on. You could have the use case of you're doing something with the Super Bowl, so you want to be around everything in the Super Bowl, but you can also wait and track thi bad things that happen to you. For Coca-Cola, it could be uh, conversations about obesity that are not necessarily bad, but Coca-Cola has a point of view that they want to market around it. So when people start talking about obesity, it has nothing to do with Coca-Cola. It could be with something completely different. They can put their content there and create awareness because it's relevant. So this is the kind of things that they can do by tracking. and. The problem with having a, a manual r war room all the time is that it's really hard to have people for every every little different thing. You need technology to do that, and that's you, what is, your, is yours manned 24 hours. Uh, the CIC is, mo is monitored 24 hours a day. But we did a, a good example is what we did for, for FIFA for the World Cup in Brazil. So we did s we set up something like a war room, and there were I think about I don't know 35 people there. Um, it was uh, run over 65 days, uh, uh, sorry, 32 these days. These are Coca-Cola staff. These are Coca-Cola staff and, and partners and agency staff as well. So we had specialists who were data analysts, social media analysts, content creators. Um, and then over those um, uh, 35 days, I think it was 64 games, they created um, 10, 10 TV commercials that, that were wow. edited within a very short space of time. Uh, they created something like 12 in, um, infographics. And these were uh, using footage from the games. Yeah, and, and just taking the mood and the sentiment and the trends that were coming uh, back from social media to help inform the, you know, the creative story that, we, that right. we wanted to tell. And, and, uh, and I think in the end we had um, something like uh, 16,000 individual um, uh, replies to people that had contacted uh, um, Coca-Cola via Twitter or Facebook. So it was, a, it was a huge affair and something like that it is not, it's not something that you can maintain and is not scalable, but it, you, we needed it for that sort of event because we wanted to maximize on all the conversations and the interests which naturally a big event like that has. Um, but, but outside of that, on the day-to-day, -day, then the, the, the CIC does, does that, uh, you know, that monitoring of, 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 the, of the regular um, you know, amount of content and conversations that are going on around our brand. In, in the end of the day, um, those things need to work together mm. because um, this is a great example of something that you can do, but you can do it real scale. We, every day, we probably buy a thousand different trends for our clients. When I say buy, it's basically find it right now. It's Barack Obama trending, and then it's iPhone, and then it's Android, and we place their ads next to this relevant content, and we do it a thousand times a day. Super why, relevant. Why would you care about Barack Obama? Well, maybe Barack Obama is now trending for... Um, for a specific campaign that Levi's is doing. I don't know, maybe he's wearing a Levi's jeans and is trending all of a sudden, so it's relevant well, I guess for I mean, a political campaign could have the same interests as this. Correct. But the thing is, with technology, there's no creativity. We can do the automated stuff. We can place the content in relevant places. We can't create the content. And w you need, so you can have a smaller war room creating relevant content, and you can have the technology helping you spread the content in real time. And I think in the end of the day, basically what we're trying to build is the software that gives you the tools mm. to do that. Because right now there's not many tools for real-time marketing, and real-time marketing is everywhere. We, it's in video, it's in mobile, it's in display. Everywhere you go, there's real-time stuff that's happening, and you need tools to be able to engage with that. I mean, here's, I mean, th this is a question now for you, David. I mean. I, I've, I've always been amazed, you know, CPMs on, in publications, I don't know, 30 bucks to get a thousand impressions or something like that. The numbers in social media, I mean, for, th you know, your guy is sitting there getting paid 30 bucks an hour. Can he really reach a thousand people in an hour? In an, in an, in an, I mean, or is this a, a non economic thing? Is this a. You can reach, you know, it's absolutely possible to reach people at scale in that sort of short space of time. If he gets time. lucky, I mean, if he gets yeah, viral or well, something. There's, 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 there's a skill in understanding the, contact, the context and having the right, right, the, the right content and, and, and being in the moment. Um, 
but then you know, a lot of this, a, a lot of uh, real-time marketing is not just organic. Uh, a lot of it is supported by by, by paid uh, you know, dollars going into, in behind that to support it, whether it's on Facebook or, or, or Twitter or anywhere else for that matter. So it's it's certainly it's certainly not it's certainly not free, and um, and, you know, and 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 you have to invest in it from a from a media perspective right. as well as a human perspective and as well as a technology perspective. Um, if in the world of, like the principal, Coke's a good example. We just had uh, a couple of people up here talking about public relations. Obviously, what you're doing is sort of half in traditional marketing and half in what might have been called public relations, you know, is, is reacting to things to the public directly. Where do, in the org chart of Coke, are you working for the comms team, the marketing team, or are they the same thing now, or what is, how does it work? Well, my role is in, is in the marketing team, uh, but the, 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 the CIC center supports what we would call um, more the sort of reputation uh, management right. and, and PR and, and corp comms, as well as, uh, as, as well as marketing. So they have some input. So they ha yeah, they have, they have and input. And if they have they're, a message. They're, they're listening not only for reactions to what we're doing from right. a marketing perspective, but what we're doing from a, from a product perspective. Well, and that gets back to my damage control. If some, uh, something uh, would happen you could use your CIC as part of the response team. And to yeah, and there is a process for escalating what needs to be escalating and, 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 and not for not. And, and, and if we're wanting to do, you know, the, the thing about, uh, again, about real time is, 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 the, is, the, is the pace. Mm -hmm. So again, unlike tra traditional advertising, um, it, you, 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 need, you, need, um, you need pace, um, and, uh, but you, you, and it, needs, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, because if you if you're trying to get per perfection all the time, you'll you'll miss the moment. So you need to collapse those um, those those time scales and those sign off processes. And we, and and there are and there are times when we've been able to you know, to to lessen that time that we need to, and so that we can get a so we can get some some content out or some communication out. So something we did the other week in our uh, in our GB market was um, when the when the Ben Gate. Um, uh, hashtag was trending about the iPhones. We put out a, a nice little image of all the Coca-Cola bottles in a row, and we said, you know, we've always had curves in all the right places, and and, and that got over a million uh, impressions, uh, you know, in a very short space of time, um, and it still took a few hours to get it uh, to get it out, but it it was uh, much more condensed, and we were now able to get that out while it was timely. Once upon a time, that would have been the kind of thing an agency would have done. Mm -hmm. That was done by one of your in-house people, I'm going to guess. Yeah, and I, I think having been on the agency side, it's sort of horses for courses. Some clients prefer to do it in-house um, and some don't. Some don't have the resource to do it in-house. But I think if you, if, when it's coming from the, from the brand and it's the brand's voice, really it's the, it's the brand of the people that understand right. most uh, or deeply how you, know, how you would respond to or react to something like that. So... It, from my perspective, I think it's, it, it's best if these things are, uh, you know, within the agent, within the, the brand, if you know, if, if it's possible. I mean, let's throw the ball down the field a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to guess that one of the tools that you guys use is some kind of contextual analysis of automated analysis of tweets. You don't have somebody reading them. Correct. A machine reads them. How c close are we to a machine being able to not just read but also respond? So. Our machine responds. Our machine responds right now with buying media. Um, but I mean, actually, with a, a message, with words. With a message, it's a more difficult one. So it's more difficult one because even if the machine could produce a perfect message, the brands will never let an automated machine write the message. They want to have a final say, and I, I and I can understand why. I don't think we're there even mentally. I think. It took, some t it took time. W the comp uh, my company is five years old. It took us five years to get to the point that the brands let us buy media for them based on what's going on all the time without approving every, c every aspect in the targeting. I think it will take much longer for, for just looking at like what is the content we're generating. Even if we're just doing simple stuff like changing one word or putting an image, brands want to approve that. And I can see the problem there, and I'm not, but uh, I'm not sure it's something we need to solve. I'm not sure it's uh, as long as you well. make it easy enough why not make it easy enough and let someone approve it? Well, probably the IBM Watson guys who are here as well probably <laughs> would say, just hook it up to Watson and off you go. I, I, I've met a couple of companies while I've been here over the last couple of days that, that have more of that, auto, that automated technology enabled, being able to respond uh, to, to Yeah, to because I mean, at, at the end of the day, but everybody does like a, a they personal want a human response. Voice, yeah. And uh, yeah. I mean, so it would be, a, if, if it were to exist, I mean, I think you're right, there's a safety issue and mm -hmm. the 
content, but those walls tend to crumble. And in my experience in the last 10 years, people say, oh, no one will ever do that. And then suddenly one day everybody's doing mm -hmm. it. Interesting. So how many people work in your group in, for Europe? You're now doing what? Northern uh, Europe and yeah, UK? Yeah, I, th I think there's about 130. 130. Uh, yeah, that's in, that's in what we call the, the European marketing team. And do you region. have any idea, Coke worldwide now, how many? Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know, because I've only it, been, it, I've it, only been one, here like eight weeks. One would think that so. would probably mean thousands uh, by extension. I'm sure, yeah, but, but I, I, don't, I don't know the exact number. And, I mean, what's your, like, your company's business? Do you tell, what do you say anything about your numbers, clients? What do you so we work with 100 brands right now, uh, all Fortune 500 companies, and we are 90 people. Half of them are engineers uh, because the system is automated. So basically, all we need to do is build an automated system, and the other people are operations people who help run the campaigns and, and all the stuff around that. But except that, everything is automated. Um, we've been growing a lot. So every year in the last four years, we've been growing by 300% in revenues and clients, and hopefully we'll continue like that. I know all of your clients are brilliant and fabulous, including Coke, by the way. I think Coke is a client of yours in America. One of the best clients, our first clients. <laughs> okay. Um, what are, what's a, if people wanted to see five other companies that are doing, or you think, a really good job with real-time marketing, what would they be? So Target is doing a phenomenal job right now. Okay. I think Amex is doing really interesting stuff. Paramount Studios are doing cool stuff, and Red Bull. Those are clients that I think doing a lot of really cool things. Okay, Dave, what are you, any ones that you look at with uh, Envy? And I think uh, there's a, a lot of travel brands are doing very well. I think um, TripAdvisor do a very, a very good job in real-time marketing. I think the, 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 um, the luxury they have is they, get a, they see what people are searching for and the types of holidays that people are searching for, and then that can inform what kind of content they create, and then they push out you know, the 10 best infinity pools around the world because they can see that that's what, that's what people have been talking about. So it's really, really relevant, and they're, you know, they're using all that data and insights they've got to create really um, interesting content that people, that people want to read. So I see that as a, a very good example of real-time marketing. Do you also get sort of like the product people looking over your shoulders and wondering what information that you have that might be of interest to them? You know, vanilla, you know, mm. is vanilla trending and let's make vanilla soda or? I'm not sure we'd build a, a product just purely based on, you know, what we were getting from, from social media. I think there's a, you know, there's a, there's a lot more science and uh, research that goes into those things, but it, 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 it could, yeah, it could, in, it could inform the process. Well, that is, I mean, to me, I mean, we, we've got about, 10 seconds left here. I mean, one of the curious things is, you know, by the way, still to this day, most people don't tweet, okay? Most people don't even post very much on mm -hmm. Facebook. You're getting a, you're not getting the whole world. You're getting a view of a certain type of person. Now, maybe that's a good person. Maybe that's the kind of people that drink Coke, but there's going to be a lot of people that you miss just simply because they never say anything. Well, I mean, what did you worry about so that? We're, well, so when we're, when we're planning, uh, you know, what our marketing strategies and com, com strategies are for the year, we don't just take into account what's being said right. on Twitter and Facebook. We, we, you know, there are all sorts of other sources and, yes. uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, qualitative in, uh, research and quantitative research and panel data and, uh, and focus groups that we, that we talk to. So it's only one component in the same way real-time marketing is only one component of our broader marketing right. mix Got across, it. you know, above the line and, and so on. On that cheerful note, we have three zeros there. So, gents, thank you very much. It's thank been you. fun. Thank you. Uh,